Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here with Mike. Mike. And what kind of rhino do we have here? So this is TK. He's one of our white rhinos. Um, and clearly, so they're not named that after their color, because, you know, that's great. And he's showing us his butt now, but you'll probably get a good look at his face. They're called white rhinos because they've actually got a really wide lip. And it's thought that Europeans went to Southern Africa, or excuse me, um, Europeans went to Southern Africa they were calling these guys wide rhinos because they've got that really, really wide lip you can see there. Um, and then English speakers heard that. They heard the Dutch calling them wide rhinos. They thought they were calling them white, and the name just sort of stuck. Um, there's one other species of rhino that's also native to Africa. It's called the black rhino, but it's exactly the same color as these guys. It's just called the black rhino pretty much because it's not the white rhino. You said Southern Africa. So what kind of countries can you find these? Uh, so these guys, they're native pretty much mostly in South Africa, specifically a couple of the countries that are right north of South Africa. Um, and then there's also the Northern South, uh, the Northern White Rhino. Um, it's right now there's only about three of them left in the wild entirely and they're found in Kenya. So these um, rhinos are very endangered? They're really, really endangered, but actually white rhinos are the least endangered of all the rhino subspecies. So he's one of five different subspecies of rhino. There you can really see that wide lip is and those horns. Um, but so there's one, again, that other African rhino, and then there's three that are native to uh, parts of Asia. And the energy, he's really cool through. Hey, bud. Yeah, he is. Showing yeah. off. Um, and those rhinos are actually a lot more endangered than these guys. They're definitely not doing well. Um, just want, yeah, just take a step back from him oh. there. Um, but compared to other rhinos, they're doing at least a little bit better. What do they use this um, horn for in the wild? It so in the wild, it's really big. It, yeah, you can see it's absolutely massive. He's got two of them. So that's another thing that they can use for protection. Um, there's one rhino species actually where only the males do have horns. So it's thought that it might be a sexual thing where females or you know males have that large horn. Sort of the same way deer grow, uh, male deer will grow antlers, um, pretty much just to attract mates. But then females with white rhinos, they also have horns and they will use those to protect their calves. What kind of adaptations do they have to? live out in their natural environment? Um, so again, definitely size. These guys, they don't have too many predators simply because nothing's really going to want to take on something this big. Males can weigh about 5,000 pounds, which is absolutely massive. So if, you know, if a pride of lions were to take one down, they'd be eaten pretty well. Um, but it's not very common for them to just because they are so massive. So I was able to pet this rhino beforehand. and. It was really hard on the skin and a lot of muscle on it. Yeah, he's, especially when he's lifting his head up like that, you can see right on his shoulder, he's got a huge, huge, uh, you know, kind of bunch of muscle right there just because his head is so massive. Oh, uh, what these guys love to do, they have relatively sensitive skin. So you can see right over here, he's got a wallow for him. Um, so they do love rolling around in the mud, sort of the same way that a pig would. That'll help him cool off because, again, it's super, super hot in parts of Africa where these guys are from wallowing around like that, that'll help him cool off, stay not too hot out there on the savannas of Southern Africa. What do these rhinos eat in their natural environment? So these guys are a grazer. Um, the other rhino species, they're a browser, but because he's got that wide lip, they sort of are able to function almost sort of like a lawnmower, where they can just kind of walk forward along and just graze grasses as they keep moving. Here we'll feed him uh, hay and a mixture of grains and that sort of thing, simply because we don't have quite enough grass to feed this guy and a couple of our other rhinos that we have here. What do you like most about these rhinos? These guys, again, their horn is super, super impressive. And what a lot of people don't realize about their horn is that it's made out of the same stuff as our hair and our fingernails. So essentially he's got like two big fingernails just kind of growing right out the front of his face. Um, and that's the different from any other animal's type of horn. Most animals that have horns, they've got bone underneath it, underneath that uh, part of exterior. His, that is completely solid keratin. Um, unfortunately, that horn is part of the reason why it, rhinos in general are such an endangered species because they are poached specifically for that horn. So would you say that was the most threatening concern to uh, rhinos? That's definitely a huge one. And then the other one, which is a concern to a lot of animals native to parts of Africa, is just having to deal with people. A lot of, you know, it's hard to imagine, but this is, you know, found in some people's backyard. And that is not, you know, if I were to walk around my backyard and see something like that, I wouldn't really like that animal either because it would be kind of imposing upon me. So it's a, it's a larger issue of trying to get people that are, you know, native to where these animals are found to appreciate these animals for what they are because we're losing them at such a rapid rate. 
Well, thank you, Mike, for telling us all about these white rhinos. Absolutely. And if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below. Come back next week for some more animal education.